morning everybody, Mel Sol here at the Mel Sol Golf School at Paulie's Plantation Golf and Country Club. And today is Saturday, October the 7th, and on Saturdays typically we do short game Saturdays. So we're going to talk to you today about helping you become a super green reader. A lot of amateurs talk to me when they're in golf school about reading greens, but here's something, and when I ask you this question, there'll be out of my entire audience, there'll be nobody that can answer yes to this question. Do you go and practice reading greens? Never met anybody that says yeah, and yet it's a part of golf, it's a part of being good. You need to practice reading greens. But there's a new way that some of the PGA and LPGA players are reading greens. So I'm gonna show you today how to become a good green reader. First of all, you need a digital level. This is one I just bought across the road at Ace Hardware. It's uh, a Craftsman. Um, it was inexpensive. So anything small like this is, is great because I can keep it in my golf bag. And uh, so you've noticed, I think, um, Justin Rose, Lee Westwood, Anna Norquist when she won the Evian Championship. They are, when they read in the green, they'll take and stand either side of the ball like this and then walk halfway down like that and then come to the back of the hole and feel it again. And what they're doing is they're feeling the slope with their feet. They're trying to decide, okay, how much, I can feel that I've got more weight on this foot than this foot. So I know that the slope goes that way, but how much? So this is where the training comes in. You have to go to your putting green at your golf course, or sometimes if you're out playing and there's nobody behind you, you can practice on the course. You can look at a, a green and stand with your feet like this and try and feel. If you're not sure whether it's uphill or downhill, you can do it this way too and feel, okay, to me this feels very, very slightly downhill. But this way, quite a lot downhill. So now I test that feel with the digital level. So if I put the digital level down on the ground here at 90 degrees to the slope or the putt that I've got, now that's 2.85, so that's almost three degrees of slope here. If I take it halfway over there, 2.8, and if I went to the ball right here at the ball, not quite as much, about 2.5. So the biggest part of the slope is right here at about three. So you'll notice with these players that what they'll do is they'll now hold up fingers. So I don't want to stand with my back to the camera, but what they're going to do is they're going to hold up one finger, two fingers, three fingers like that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hold because it's a three degree slope, I'm gonna hold up three fingers and I'm gonna allow this edge, this right edge of these three fingers, I'm gonna put against the flag and then wherever this edge falls is, the, is where I'm gonna putt. I wanna stand level with the ball and that's showing that I'm gonna putt about over here is where I'm gonna putt. So I'm gonna say about 18 inches that I'm going to do. So on this particular part, now when you do your one finger, two finger, three, depending on the number of degrees of slope, stand right at the ball. Because if you stand further away or you stand closer, if I stand here and I do three fingers, now the putt's only here. So obviously the putt's going to break less on a shorter putt, more on a longer putt. So make sure you're standing next to the ball. When you're playing on the course, and the last thing we ever want is to have something that slows down play. So this is what I call an express read. When I'm playing on the golf course, people don't even know that I'm doing this. I mean, it's so quick. I put my ball down, I stand, usually about halfway between the ball and the hole. And I thought, okay, that's about three degrees. I walk over here, I hold up three fingers, and I know, okay, I'm going to put 18 inches left. That's how quick it is. I've also, if you notice, I've put two tees, just because I'm practicing pace. I've got one tee 
about six inches past the hole and another tee about 18 inches past the hole. I want, obviously this line is also based on the amount of speed that the ball has. So the ideal putt would be one that finishes past the six inch tee but short of the 18 inch tee. That's about the right pace that you want to have. A lot of these teachers call it foot by speed where you want the ball to go about 12 inches past the hole is the ideal speed. So I'm going to do my practice swing here. I've got my line set up to where I want to aim. I'm going to do my practice swing looking about 12 inches past the hole and then I'm going to go ahead and hit my putt. Right in the middle of the hole, what a good read. So I read that for a three degree break, used my three fingers and the ball curved right into the middle of the hole. Folks, this really works. These PGA and LPGA players wouldn't be using this for their living if it didn't work. It takes some time to practice. It took me two or three months of coming out here and using the digital level to be able to say, right, this is, so you have to have the patience and the fortitude to go through this, but you can become a deadly greenkeeper. Try it.